she was only 11 years old when the devil came knocking at her bedroom door. What he did to me, he is a monster. You don't rape and sodomize and stick instruments in a child. Who was this sadistic demon? He tortured me. I felt like a prisoner. A man who raped and sodomized her virtually every day for almost four years of her young life. I was alone. He abused me every chance he had. It was her stepfather, an ex-cop, a Svengali who could charm the tail off a rattlesnake. What kind of a person does something like that? I don't know how he did half the things that he did to me. Tiffany Henderson says her only comfort growing up was knowing she had sent her ex-cop stepfather, this man, Richard McBrayer, to rot in prison for his horrible deeds. Sentenced to a maximum of 40 years. When they told me that, like, he was going to spend his life in jail, I mean, that that's what I believe. Like, he can't hurt us anymore. For young Tiffany, it meant a new lease on life. McBrayer could never harm her again. Or so she thought. It was Easter Sunday. Tiffany was driving in her car when she stopped at a traffic light. She looked over at the car next to her, and suddenly, the horror of 23 years ago was staring her right in the face. It was the monster, McBrayer. I'm getting ready to turn right, and I look over, and I was just like, wow, you know, that really looks like him. I mean, we locked eyes. I immediately felt something. I know that he saw it. That was me as well. Tiffany had just taken a terrifying U-turn into the nightmare of her past. Do you think he recognized you? Yes, absolutely. Tiffany says she had no idea, but McBrayer had been given his walking papers early by the Michigan Parole Board after only serving close to 22 years. Who do you blame for this? The Parole Board. Tiffany claims she never received notification of his early release, which is required by law. But the Michigan Parole Board insists it did reach out to her, saying the records reflect numerous attempts to contact the victim. Despite those claims, Tiffany tells me she feels victimized all over again. What was it like to see his picture today? He's laughing at me. He's like, I told you I'd get out. What do you see when you look at that picture? A monster. Tiffany says her childhood in hell began right after the ex-cop married her mom. I don't feel like I was ever a kid. He took your virginity at the age of 12? Yes, in many ways. Mm -hmm. It was a long night. And um, I didn't get any easier. I put a lot of sexual predators behind bars, but Tiffany's tales of violent rape and endless pain are some of the worst I've ever heard. I was out of my classroom and a teacher came and found me, doubled over on the floor. They had to rush me to a hospital. My bowels were blocked so bad, I almost died. From his sexual abuse? From his sexual abuse. My mother is holding one side of my hand, he's holding the other. He's right there. Right. Pretending that he cares about me, but really just make sure I'm not telling. As soon as she got home, her stepfather's vicious attacks started again. I can't scream, I can't get him off of me, I can't, there's nothing I can do to make it stop. The only way I can make it stop is killing myself, that's it. He won't go away, nobody will help me, nobody hears my pain. At first, not even her mother believed young Tiffany's seemingly wild tales of her stepfather's depravity and the countless violent rapes that went on for years. Tiffany did not like him At from all. the get-go. At all. Why did you think that was? I thought she was jealous. Desperate to have someone believe that a man who was an ex-cop was also a sexual predator, young Tiffany hatched a daring plan, even though it put her life in great danger. This is the actual tape recorder you used to record the conversation. Yes. What made you finally decide to do this? And they didn't believe me. And if my own family doesn't believe me, who's going to believe me? This was your one way out of this? Yes. Play the tape. I gotta, I gotta go. 
what strikes me is y you sound so young on the recording. I was young. And he's begging you not to do it. What's it like to hear that tape again today? I'm scared for my life. Because if he found out that I did that, that I got him on tape, like, it's like the ultimate betrayal, you know? You took this tape to authorities. Yeah. And that was the beginning of the investigation that brought him down. Yes. When Tiffany played the tape for her mom, suddenly the blindfold came off. I knew right then and there he was going to kill her. He wasn't going to ever let her tell. She told him, I'm going to tell my mom. How did you not detect this? I don't know. I'm, ash I'm ashamed of myself. And there's nothing that any viewer could say that I haven't said to myself. I actually sat and watched shows about moms that had daughters that were abused by husbands or boyfriends. I'd say, God, she had to have known. And I'm ashamed of myself for saying that. Oh, my God. Looking back, Tiffany's mom, Stacey Dale, says the sickening signs were all there. Tiffany would excuse herself from dinner. I'm all done, Mom. Is it OK if I go out to my room? Sure, Tiff, no problem. And maybe five, 10 minutes later, he'd say, oh, excuse me, I got to go to the bathroom. And he'd rape her in the bathroom, come back down and finish dinner. With her outraged mother at her side, now the pair take the damning recording to Michigan State Police. But it wasn't enough to arrest McBrayer. The 14-year-old would have to set another trap on tape, and this time it was with a ruse that she was pregnant. This is from the state police post. Yeah. Hello, Dad. Yeah? Hi, Mom. I'm pregnant. You are? Yes. Yeah. Well, when did you find us out? A couple days ago. Are you going to do anything for this baby? I'm going to help you is what I'm going to do, Tiffany. You have to come see me. You're 14 at the time. And at the time, McBrayer attempts to blame Tiffany's mother. What's happening is she's put me in a position, Tiffany, to where I have to protect myself. There's nothing I can do. I love you, and I want to see you, but I cannot come to you. Do you still you want to be with me? Yes. My mom won't let me see you. She's afraid that you're going to hurt me or something. I am not going to hurt you. Um, there are no restraining orders against you seeing me. Does your mother know? About the baby? Yes. Yeah, and she can't figure out whose it is. Okay, well, we have to sit down, we have to work this out, we have to talk it out. Okay? Yeah. Because all it's going to do is uh, ruin the rest of my life. However angry you get at me, you cannot use this as a weapon against me because you can ruin the rest of my life. Okay? This baby, it's going to look like mad or you. We need to talk. You're panicking, okay? Don't panic. My mom is going to hate me if I am. He admits it on the thing. Yep. But it's all about him. It just kills me. I'm still fighting. But he's got a job, he's got a car, he's got a house. Should he ever be out of prison? Never. No, he should not. I will fight to let everybody know who and what he is. I will never let him hurt anybody else, ever. You know, I survived this by the grace of God. Grace, if not a miracle, are what Tiffany needs now more than ever. I want to feel happy. I want to feel that, and I just don't. Only with great pain can Tiffany Henderson view the images of her young self or reflect on her childhood. I don't feel like I was ever a kid. Well, no, how could it's you be when somebody part. abused you? Finally, at 37 years old, she had been comforted, knowing her stepfather, the sadistic man who raped and tortured her for almost four years as a child, was securely behind bars. He should rot in jail. Or so she thought, until the day she realized Richard McBrayer had been paroled. How is it possible that Tiffany is at a traffic light on Easter Sunday and looks over and sees this man, her attacker. It's something out of a bad movie. I can't imagine how she must have felt at that moment when she realized, oh, there's my rapist. Now here he is in the street. And isn't it interesting 
that not only is he released without them giving her notification, but that he's released into her neighborhood? Under Michigan state law, a victim must be notified six months prior to the release of an inmate. Tiffany says she would have shouted from the rafters to stop her brutal stepfather's release. How many parole hearings did you attend for him? Since 2009, I've been to 11. But tragically, this last time, she says the parole board didn't contact her. And we could have appealed this and he would have never gotten out. Carrie Angie should know. She's the former assistant prosecutor who succeeded in keeping McBrayer, an ex-cop and a registered black belt behind bars in a 2011 parole hearing. I've never seen a case this bad. To add outrage to insult, McBrayer served only about half the maximum 40 year sentence. Did you think while he was out, he would come and get you? Yes, I still believe that. Tiffany says she's been tenaciously keeping tabs on her rapist, but the parole board insists it was diligent in reaching out to Tiffany about McBrayer's impending release, saying victim notification is taken seriously by the Michigan Department of Corrections and all the proper steps were taken in this case. I'm not sure what kind of record they have of that. I haven't seen anything to prove that assertion. What's the biggest injustice here? It's known to them the kind of person he is. Not only do they have the full record in front of them, but they also have Tiffany appearing there every single time he comes up in person, um, tearfully relaying her memories of her childhood. He's danger to any child walking down the street. Look, this guy thinks he's smarter than all of us. He's a master manipulator, and eventually he's gonna grab another kid off the street. And Angie says he's a trolling, unrepentant pedophile who disgustingly referred to raping Tiffany countless times as a love story. He was raping your daughter up to four times a day. Yes. Take her down into the basement, which he built. How close did you come to committing suicide? Oh, I literally had, I have scars on my wrist where I literally cut them. What did he take from you? Honestly, I feel like the person I was. I died the minute he touched me. I lost everything about myself. Despite Tiffany's lifetime pain, the parole board set him free, even after he confessed to this. He has told his therapist that he continues to have interest in young girls, underage girls, and he blames Tiffany for the liaison how a parole board can listen to that and, and find reasonable assurances of public safety and then release him into the street is a mystery to me. Is it possible that he's rehabilitated? Never. First of all, he has to admit what he did. He's never admitted what he did to me. Never, not once. For Tiffany, there is one small beam of bright light in her horrible nightmare. The circuit court has overturned the parole board's decision to release McBrayer early and threw him back in the county jail. That came after Tiffany filed a motion to have her former stepdad rearrested and to challenge the board's release. Angie says the original decision to release for good behavior and the rapist's claim of rehabilitation is nothing more than a con job. He indicated that he was gonna be moving to Louisiana because he wanted to stay away from Tiffany and didn't want to be triggered by her. It was a non-existent address. And the next thing you know... Well, shouldn't they haul him back into prison just for that? I couldn't agree more. I wouldn't be surprised if they decided to let him out tomorrow. If he gets out again, Tiffany fears for her own teenage daughter. She doesn't want McBrayer anywhere near her fragile life. He used our love against each other. That's what he did. He used our love for each other against each other so that he didn't get caught. That's what they're like. And he's gonna be on the street and we're serving up our children to this monster. Despite Tiffany's fears and despair, she's not about to give up. This was a 14 year old girl who had the courage to put him behind bars by snaring him on tape, getting a near confession. Hi, Mom. She's certainly not going to let this perverted monster get his claws on anyone else. They took my right to appeal. They took my right to 
have my my re-entry program. Her nightmare has a reprieve as McBrayer will sit behind bars until a decision is reached over whether he walks the streets again. If the parole board does prevail here and he does get let out, what are your biggest fears? I'm immediately concerned for Tiffany and her family. I think it's pretty clear from the record that he intended on killing her mother and you listen to that tape, Chris, uh, it sounds to me like he intended on killing Tiffany as well. What do you say to him now? It doesn't matter what I have to do, how painful it is, how hard my life is when I am away from this camera and I live every day in fear, in pain, afraid for my daughter, afraid for, I will fight to keep him in there. He pled guilty to two counts, so serve your time.